Hey students, it's time to start learning the Queen's Pawn openings, and more specifically, in this lesson we're going to learn the Queen's Gambit, which starts with the moves Pawn to d4, so we start with the Pawn in front of the Queen two steps, then Pawn d5, and the actual Gambit starts with the move Pawn to c4. So this is a very popular opening, it has remained popular for many many years, especially at the top level. So my main objective in this class is that when you're done watching this video, you're going to have everything you need to play your first game with the Queen's Gambit without being concerned if you get in trouble in the opening or anything like that. You're going to get out of the opening safely if you follow what you're going to be learning in this class. So let me lay out the lesson plan for you. So first, I need to take a few seconds to tell you what a Gambit is. You need to understand the concept of a Gambit. Then. I have to prove to you that it's safe to give up this pawn for free and that you're going to get it right back. If I don't show this to my students, they're not going to even try the Queen's Gambit. Some people feel really paranoid if they give up this pawn for free, but I'm going to go move by move what to do in order to get it back or how to get more advantage if they actually don't want to give the pawn back. Then after we do that, I'm going to show you what the plan is if they decline it. A lot of people are just going to decline the Gambit, so you need to know what to do. And then finally, I'm going to show you guys two games played by professional players. They're very short games, but you're going to see how they played the opening and then how they transition into the middle game and they get a very nice game. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, first, a gambit is basically when you sacrifice a pawn in the opening in order to get ahead in development. So you get to develop your pieces faster or you also get more control by offering that pawn for free. So that's what the gambit is. Now, in this variation, they could, like I said before, they could accept the gambit, so they could take it, which in turn gives you guys more control over the center. Now the black pieces have only one central pawn, and you have two central pawns. Now, I'm not going to show you this variation in, in this class, but there's one variation where they actually go pawn to e4. And as you can see, we have full control over the center, which makes it difficult for your opponent to deploy his pieces and maneuver around the center. Going back, the move that you should play here is actually pawn to e3. Now, let me go back here, and before I get to it, if you feel really paranoid about this pawn sacrifice uh, at the beginning, you should know one thing. If you wanted to get it right back, you could just do queen a4, check, and you're going to get that pawn. So that's why we say this is a safe sacrifice. If he blocks, I don't know, with the bishop, well, you get the pawn right back. If he blocks with the knight, now notice that he's attacking d4 twice. So you could just defend it, because this guy is pinned, and right after you're going to get the pawn. Now, with that said, this is not the elegant way to collect that pawn. If you do the queen's gambit, it's to get ahead in development. You don't want to be wasting two moves with the queen and exposing the queen to just get the pawn back. So the move that I want you to do if they accept it, and let me go back, um, pawn to d4, pawn to d5, I do the gambit, he takes it. Now, the move that you're going to do is pawn to e3. You offer support to this pawn, and you open up the bishop. This is the elegant way to take the pawn. You're going to take it with the bishop, because then the bishop is developed, and he's on a very good diagonal. So that's the idea. Now, from here, they could either ignore it. Most people are just going to ignore it, maybe develop the knight, and you easily collect the bishop. And you're going to see how we continue from here. But what most people get concerned with is, what if they try to hold on to this pawn? They could do pawn to b5. They could do something like queen d5, and I'm going to show you guys what happens. So first of all, if they go pawn to b5, the only thing you need to memorize is that you do this, pawn to a4. So you're going to undermine or deviate this pawn, that way you can collect on c4. Now, they could take, and you're going to see what you do in that case, or they could defend this pawn as well. But all of these moves are just bad. If they go pawn a6, well, not a big deal, you get the pawn for free, because now my rook is pinning that pawn on the other rook. So if he takes, okay, give him the rook for free. If instead they protect it with this pawn, okay, so I take, he takes back, and now look at this diagonal. So my queen is going to go to f3, and believe it or not, there's nothing they could do to avoid losing material. That rook cannot be defended safely, and if they try to block the queen, the queen is going to capture anything that gets in the way. So that's check. Uh, if they had blocked with the bishop, you could just get the bishop and there's nothing they could do about it. So with that said, guys, 
Uh, pawn to b5 is actually the worst thing they could do. So b5, you know, a4 solved all of your problems. If they actually take on a4, look at this, you could even just leave them like that. They have double tap pawns isolated, so you could get them anyways. Right now, if, if you really want to start getting your pawns back, you could just take on c4, you get, again, a very good diagonal, and then develop your knight, and so on. You could, again, take with the queen, and then you take this one as well. But to be honest, most people are just going to, they take, they're just going to ignore it. And they're going to probably do knight f3, de deploy their pieces. There's nothing they can do to hold on to it. But this should give you some peace when it comes to uh, getting the pawn back. So let me go back here. And you might be asking, okay, what if he doesn't do b5? I'm really freaked out about that pawn. What if it goes something like queen d5? Well, like we said, you could easily deploy your pieces. You see, he hasn't developed any of his pieces he already had the knight out at the expense of the queen. So maybe he goes queen c6 trying to hold on to the pawn. Not a big deal. I could go knight f3. Two knights already de deployed. This pawn cannot be defended. Let's say he goes knight f6, knight e5, attacking the queen and getting the pawn. Again, no one is going to do this, guys, because they're just wasting time with the queen. They're going around. Now, what if they had gone um, queen e6 here? Well, you could do pawn to d5 if you like. If he goes knight at queen a6, again, you keep deploying your pieces, he's just falling behind in development. Sooner or later, you just need to put more pressure on that pawn with a knight, you could do it with the queen, and you're going to get that pawn. So, I hope this gives you some peace of mind when it comes to offering the, the, the queen's gambit. But now, let's say that they actually take it, and this is what most people are going to do. They take it, you're going to do e3, and they just forget about that pawn. They just continue to develop their pieces. Well, that's, that's perfectly fine. You take your the pawn, then you develop your knights, and then you castle. That's it. So this is going to get you out of the opening safely. So maybe something like this. And now, guys, that's it. My job here is done. You get into the middle game. You should know what to do here. Just play chess, have fun. That's it. So you could do something like pawn e4. Look, full control of the center. You should be fine. Now, with that taken care of, let's go back and let's say that when you did uh, d5, queen's gambit, let's say that they don't want to take it, let's say that they decline it. There are two main moves here. They could do pawn to c6, and if you take, they simply take back, and we both have central pawns left. They could also do pawn to e6, and the same thing, they're protecting the pawn. So both moves are equally acceptable, they're good moves. And they could even, you could even see things like this. You go knight c3, and some people actually do both to bring more support to, to d5. That's fine. For you, just know that it's all about developing your pieces, follow the three principles of the opening, then control the center, you're doing that already, and you castle. So this bishop, we want to get him out uh, maybe to f4, maybe to g5. The most popular move is to go to g5, but it's okay if you just go bishop f4. After that, just open up the other bishop and castle. So let's say I go bishop g5, he goes bishop e7, e3, opening up this bishop, he castles, well, now I could just go bishop d3, knight d7, and I castle as well. So at this point, again, your pieces are de developed, your king is safe, and you're controlling the center. So just play chess from here. Let's say they did something, just to show you a little bit more, um, let's say they go pawn to b6. Well, and remember, if they ever take now, we have the bishop to defend. So if they did something like this, it's all about you continuing to attack. So you could finally take here, and once you do that, you get a semi-open file for your rooks. You could, let's say they take like this, you could just improve your queen. So maybe your queen goes to e2, that way you connect the rooks. Maybe you go to b3. And again, this is already move number 10 you should be fine at this point. So now all we have left to do, guys, is go over the two games that I wanted to show you. So this is going to put everything together, and you're going to see actual players using this opening. And the best thing about these games is that they're full of tactical and strategic ideas, so you're going to get a lot more than opening ideas uh, from, this, from this lesson. So the first game starts with the moves, of course, d4, d5, pawn to c4, queen's gambit, and they accepted it. So this is the first game where they accept the gambit. Now here, they went pawn to e3, pawn to e6, and instead of taking the pawn right away, they said, he's not going anywhere, so knight f3. 
at f6. Now they took on c4. So guys, not a big deal if you had taken the pawn first and then you develop the knight. So it's completely up to you. Now after they took on c4, guess what? The black pieces are going to try to undermine my center. They understand I have two central pawns, so they're going to do c5, trying to get rid of it. So after c5, the white piece is just castled. We have enough defenders, not a big deal. Then c takes e4 and e takes e4. At this point, guys, you should be familiar with the concept of the isolated pawn. You know it's not a good thing to have, especially in the end game. But guess what? Isolated pawns could also be a good thing. You just need to know how to use it. Of course, it's going to offer you benefits in the middle game to attack and so on. But the closer we get to the end game, it becomes a liability. But when you have it, it's going to offer uh, support to these good squares for your knights and other pieces. It's going to offer you semi-open files for your rooks to attack. So you're going to see how they use that in this game. So after e takes on d4, bishop e7, they're trying to castle quickly. Then look, just like I said, this knight is going to e5 in the center and protected by a pawn. Now castle, trying to get uh, to safety. We keep developing our pieces, knight c3, knight c6, then bishop e3. And finally, we have developed all of the minor pieces. Knight a5, attacking the bishop, and we bring the bishop back to safety. Now, if you pay attention, this bishop is already keeping an eye on the black's castle. So that's something to keep in mind for later in the game. So now b6, trying to deploy this, this bishop. Queen f3, not only am I attacking that rook, but I'm looking to transfer the queen from the queen side. I'm looking to transfer it to the queen side. So bishop b7, we knew that they could do that. And now queen h3. You see, this bishop is now working together with the queen to attack h7. The only problem is this knight. So maybe a good plan would be to attack the knight. If the knight is gone, we could take on h7. So rook to c8, bringing the rook to the, to the open file. Rook a to d1, rook on the same file as the queen. Rook e8. See, after we develop the pieces, the rooks come to a better position. Now, this rook is doing nothing here. We bring it to the semi-open file. Bishop f8, bishop g5. We talked about this. We have two pieces attacking h7. We're going after the defender. So after bishop g5, they want us out. And now there's this powerful move, guys. Knight g4. So we don't really mind it if they take on g5. Because remember, our objective is to eliminate the defender. So if they took, now we cannot do checkmate because of the knight, but we have this in-between move. Check. They have to either take with the pawn or with the queen. And we're going to be doing checkmate no matter what. So that was a very powerful move. And to be honest, there's nothing that the black pieces could do here. Now, let's say, just to show you guys uh, what they had in mind, let's say they moved the queen, I don't know, queen c7. So if that's the case, you could just take on f6, then when the pawn takes, you have knight h6. Not on f6, on h6. We're opening up the file for, for the queen. So check, where can the king go? If it goes on this file, we have a very nice discovery uh, discovery check. So we could just go knight f7, and anywhere he goes, that's going to be checkmate. If instead he goes up, then we have queen g4 check. He has to either go here or take. If he goes to h8, checkmate in one move. We just go queen g8 checkmate. If instead he took the knight, then we have this sequence check. He's forced to go to g7 and checkmate. Very nice game, guys. Notice that, again, all they did was develop the pieces, castle, and control the center, nothing else. So from the moment that they did the queen's gambit and they accepted it, we just did pawn to e3, pawn to e6, then knight f3, knight f6, and now they got the pawn back. From here, c5, we castled, king is safe, they took, we took with the pawn, nothing wrong with uh, taking with the knight as well, by the way, we took with the pawn, then knight goes to the center, develop the other knight, develop the bishop, save this bishop, he's now aiming at the castle, and this is already move number 11. From here, decided to attack. Queen comes over to the king side, and you saw the rest of the game, guys. 
Okay, here we have the game where they actually decline the gambit. So we're going to go over this one for you to see what to do if they do not accept it. You also have to have a good plan for, for that. So the game started with pawn to d4, pawn to d5, then knight f3, knight f6. Notice that they haven't done the gambit yet, but it doesn't matter. Many times you just transpose into it. c4 and then pawn to c6. Guys, this is the same thing as going pawn to d4, pawn to d5, gambit, they decline it, and then we develop this knight. So that's the only thing. You could see this in many different forms. Now, knight c3, pawn to e6. So they never took on c4. We're just going to develop our pieces. This bishop is time to develop him. You could go again f4 or to g5. In this game, they went to g5, knight b to d7. Now, time to develop the other bishop. So pawn to e3. And now queen a5. Now this, uh, not that it really matters, but this variation that the black pieces chose is called the Cambridge Springs variation. It used to be very popular, not anymore. Here the white pieces actually took on d5, so they trade the side pawn for the central pawn, and the black pieces took with the knight. Now they're putting pressure on this knight. They, they know that the knight is pinned, so they're putting pressure on it, and the white pieces went queen to b3. We have to protect it, and at the same time, we activate the queen. It's very common, guys, to develop the queen in the queen's gambit. It's very common to develop her to b3, putting pressure on b7, on the center, but also, you can see the queen go to c2. You just need to see which one is better in a specific position. So, queen b3 happened. Now, pawn c5, trying to target the central pawns, and now bishop d3. So, they know that if the pawn takes, we could take back with the knight, we could take back with the pawn. We just are going to focus on developing. Same thing for the black pieces, bishop e7 trying to castle. We take, they have to take with the knight, because if they take with the king, they lose the right to castle. So knight e7, castle, c takes d4, and now knight takes to d4. So that knight is coming towards the center. Notice how, if you take a moment to evaluate this position, we have all of our minor pieces developed, the queen is active, and we're castled. The black pieces have to still castle, they have to develop the bishop, their knights are not so, so active, so definitely the white pieces are a little bit better in this position. So now they went e5, instead of castling, they decided to attack and leave the king in the center. And now there's a very nice move for the white pieces. Instead of moving the knight that is being attacked, they realized that there's a very weak square on d6, and if one of the knights gets to d6, that's going to be checked, and also attacking f7, which is attacked by the white queen. So they said, okay, how can I get to d6? We have a knight here, and d6 happens to be a, an easy square for the knight to get to. So he went knight e4. If they had taken it, not that they did, but if they had taken it, we have knight d6 check, and they have to go to either f8 or d8. King f8 is checkmate, and king d8 is going to be a fork, and then we get a rook. So, in the actual game, they did not take, of course, they castled. But now, it's a little bit too late. So, knight e6, look at this move, it's strong move after strong move. The knight on e6 is possible because, again, this bishop is not developed, the knight is in the way. So, now, if they take, we're going to be able to go in with... The, the queen check, and if they block with the rook, well, we could just put even more pressure on that rook, and it's going to fall. If they just move the king back to, to h8, then we get this knight for free. So that was a very powerful move, not to mention that we have a lot of attacking chances afterwards. So after knight e6, they just went pawn to h6, then knight d6. Look at these two knights compared to the black knights. We are in their territory. So knight c5, attacking the queen and hoping that we get rid of this knight in their territory. Now at this point there's a very powerful move for the white pieces and I challenge you to pause the video and take one or two minutes to see if you can come up with it. The move here came after they understood that they're attacking the rook, they're attacking this pawn on f7 with the knights and they're attacking g7. So they were looking for candidate moves. So look at checks and the only check that we have right now is bishop h7. I know this is hard to see, but you have to look at your candidate moves. The king is in trouble, how can I put him in check? How can I attack him? 
after bishop h7, they have two moves. Either they accept the sacrifice and they take it, or they move to h8. If they take it, well, we could simply just take the rook with a check. So they never have the time to get the queen. That's an in-between move. Check. And then if they go to g8, well, check because this knight is defending. Only move. And then we just have knight e8 and we do checkmate on, on g7. Regardless of the checkmate, we're already winning by a lot of material. Now, let's say that when I took the rook, they went to h8. Then you have check with the knight. Only move and then checkmate in three moves. You go check. If he goes to take the knight, checkmate. If he goes to h8, then you have queen g8. This is what we call the smother mate. Check, he's forced to take, and now checkmate with the knight. So the two knights checkmate. I know I went really fast, guys. Feel free to go back over this, uh, this part of the video again. I'm not taking too much time on it because the main objective of the class is to master the opening. This is tactics, but anyways, you, you can go back and review it if you want to go over it one more time. So that's how the game ended. The moment they did um, bishop h7, the black pieces actually resigned. They knew they were going to get in trouble no matter what. All right, guys, so this should be enough for you to get started and play your first game as a queen's gambit. There are many lines, many sub variations after you play d4, d5, c4. Uh, they could accept it, decline it, within those uh, variations or sub-variations, but you don't need to spend hours memorizing all of those lines. You have the main ideas, and if you follow the main principles that I told you, you should be fine. The game should be decided in the middle game or end game, because this is enough to get you out of the opening safely. With that said, if you have any questions, leave me a comment, and like always, I'm going to be more than glad to reply to you. So, until next time.